Next, we'll have a look at the generally accepted format for the statement of changes in equity. At the top of the report, always specify the enterprise's name, then what the report is, in this case, obviously, the statement of changes in equity. And then as we have learned, the statement of changes in equity regards a certain period, in this case, for the month ended 28th of February 2012. As the name states, the statement of changes in equity shows us the transactions that affect equity in the business, which in summary would include capital, net profit, which we received from the income statement, and then drawings, which is a negative impact on capital. So let's have a look at the breakdown. At the top of the report, we start with the balance at the beginning of the month. Then we would add the net profit for the month, which is brought down from the income statement. Then we'll subtract any drawings. And this will then bring us to the total of the statement of changes in equity. Lastly, we will have a look at the generally accepted format for the balance sheet. As before, always specify the name of the enterprise. And then as we have learned, the balance sheet shows us the financial position of the enterprise at a specific point in time, as opposed to the statement of changes in equity and the income statement, which shows us a, a result for a specific period. We'll start with the assets which will then be the total of the fixed assets and the current assets. These are then added together and then shown on the balance sheet. Next, the equity and the liabilities, which will be the total of all the equity and all the transactions affecting liabilities of the enterprise. These are also then added together to give us a total. Very importantly, remember that your total equity and liabilities must always equal your total assets. This we learned in the basic accounting equation, where assets on the one side must always be equal to equity plus liabilities.